after so much failures, your parents finally let you go. And for an instant, you can feel the power of balance and the feeling of freedom. I was 20 years old. On January 2015, I had finished my first exam, uh, my last exam actually at Loughborough University. And I had to release all the stress I had accumulated. So I took my bicycle and cycled all the way from the middle of the UK to the sea. 180 kilometers later, with frozen feet and weakened vision, I arrived to one of the most beautiful beach in the UK. And all I could see was fog and rain. Amazing. So there I realized that, yes, I loved cycling, but perhaps there was more to discover than foggy beaches. So two years later, I wrote a letter to my cousin, inviting him to cycle around the world. And together, we cycled 18,000 kilometers in 17 countries like South Africa, Brazil, New Zealand. And we gave ourselves a mission to meet and share the local solutions to one of the most devastating environmental problems we're facing, plastic waste. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mathieu Vitfoot, and I'm here to tell you the five things I learned from my journey. Let's start with a game. Imagine a pile here on stage of everything you possess. Like your TV in your living room, your 10 pairs of shoes, all the random stuff you store in your garage, all of it would be here. Now, what would you take if you would carry it for one year on this bicycle? 25 kilograms, that's all we could carry, including food, water, and shelter. Two t-shirts, two underwears, <laughs> our tent, cooking stove, and sleeping bag, that's all we could carry. And with the distance throughout the kilometers, the nomad life taught us to let go of things and thoughts that slow us down. The nomad life taught me that happiness doesn't come from the accumulation of things, but rather the one of experiences and encounters. Before I left my home, I heard a French philosopher, Pierre Rabhi, once said that in, in nature, the lion would only kill what is necessary for him. He doesn't have a bank account of antelopes. He only kills what is necessary for him. So that is actually my first message. Whether it's on a bicycle or in life, think about what you really need and carry only what you need. Second, all of the shocking plastic waste, waste images you've seen on social media, I went and see it with my own eyes. I've inhaled the toxic fumes of burning landfill in Morocco. I've dived with manta rays in Indonesia, beautiful animals dancing in the sea, but under a layer of soft packaging. I've cried interviewing children, waste pickers, working on landfills the size of cities. But all of this, I have seen none of it in Rwanda. We were cycling all the way from South Africa, all the way to Rwanda. And when we reached the border, the custom officer looked in our bags and he was looking in case we were carrying weapons, drugs, plastic bags. Boom. Actually, 11 years ago, Rwanda was one of the first countries to ban plastic bags. Now, you may not fully agree with the way the government runs the country, but it made it the cleanest one in Africa. In the span of 15 years, it doubled its amount of forest and empowered millions of children to find the local solutions to environmental problems. Now, what I learned from Rwanda was that you have to lead by example, inspire future generation, and that there is no planet B. So my second message is that we have to take care of our home planet. Now, enough talks. Let's cycle together. Imagine you're at the bottom of that hill between Chile and Argentina, and you're about to cross the Cordillera des Andes. Those of you who want, you can close your eyes. Imagine you're sitting on a bicycle. You could feel the cold breeze on your hands. You can hear the acoustic silence of the mountains. And all you can see is a vertical road rising up in the horizon. 
After two hours, your legs start to burn. Your breath increases with the gradients and the altitude. After three hours, you reach the last turn on that picture, but only to realize you've done one third of the way. And suddenly, a strong headwind comes and almost knocks you down every turn. Now, in your head, you will say it's impossible. Your knee hurts, all oh, your bike is too heavy. But in your head, you will say also, I will stop at the next turn. I quit, I stop at the next turn. But you don't, and you keep going for seven hours until you finally reach the top of that hill at 4,000 meters. You could see a beautiful panoramic view. You hug your cousin and tears come out of your eyes. Now, we all have our own mountains to climb, our own winds to face. I set my personal mountain to be having a positive impact on both the people and the environment around me. But to achieve it, it might take me a lifetime, but I'm taking it one turn at a time. And I think it should be the same with businesses. We need a long-term vision, 2050, yeah, that's good, that's important. But we should not forget the first turn and be coherent. So that's actually my third message. Find your mountain, climb your mountain, but do it one turn at a time. Fourth, when you start cycling for so long, imagine seven hours every day, you, you dream about cycling, like you dream about gears, you dream about wheels, and you start to think, oh, maybe my life is a cycle. Uh, birth, life, death, and it all goes on. My body here is a product of nature, eco-designed for millions of years of R&D. It's just cycles, and it, it was better every time. But my body is a product of nature, so should our economy and the products that we make. In fact, it's not the case today. An average person in this room would waste 32 kilograms of clothes every year. In total, worldwide, it's 140 million kilograms of clothes burned every year. Now, I, I have on me a few examples. This t-shirt was made out of recycled fabric, this jeans, recycled jeans. My shoes used to be plastic bottles and organic cork. My belt is a, is a uh, bike tire, and my wallet here used to be a saving jacket from a plane. I'm wearing trash here. <laughs> Don't I look fabulous? <laughs> <laughs> but that's what circular economy is all about. It's actually seeing in waste a resource. And when you do this, you actually cut costs on raw materials, on taxes, on waste disposals. So that's actually from nature. My fourth message, we have to create products in a circular way. Now my final message. For 365 days with my cousin, our instinct was our primary guide. We would sit on the saddle, eat when we wanted, sleep where we wanted, and take the time to meet random people like a Maasai warrior in Tanzania or a Kiwi farmer in New Zealand. Change was our only routine. But last June when I came back in Paris, it was a challenge to adapt to the sedentary life. I had to swap my saddle for a desk chair and the horizon for a computer screen. But I remembered my mountain, having a positive impact on the people and the environment around me. And throughout my journey, I realized that a lot of the local solutions would benefit by connecting to others. So I've joined a team of like-minded people, and together, we work kind of like a Tinder of circular economy, where we match the opportunity of multinationals, the circular economy opportunities, with existing solutions. But I've seen hundreds of local solutions. I've worked with a lot of uh, multinationals. But my hope for humanity doesn't lie in startups or in multinational. My hope for humanity lies in its people. Whether it's the speakers we've heard tonight, or whether it's the people I've worked with, whether it's probably you here tonight, my hope lies, and that's my fifth message, my hope lies in your ability to change your world.
I came up with an amazing acronym of the five C's. Carry only what you need. So think back about the bicycle. Care for our home planet, because she's in trouble. Climb your own mountain, but do it one turn at a time. Create circular products to be sustainable in the long term. And change the world around you. Yesterday, we were having dinner, and everyone was singing, wishing me a happy 25th birthday. And at that moment, I couldn't help to think about this talk I was going to give and the things that's changed since my first bicycle ride. The rise of internet, global warming, environmental disasters. It's hard sometimes to understand the world around you. But I've realized that evolving in this complexity is just like cycling in a big city. You have to see what's coming, constantly adapt your course and move with the sole strength of your body. Yesterday, I woke up at 5 a.m. and cycled from France to here. But I came and I come as a messenger of circular economy. So, ladies and gentlemen, please, the next time you grab your handlebar, remember that the power to change the world lies in your hands. Thank you.